So good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, chairman on the dais, and I am Professor Ena Rondabadha, I am the chairman of Committee for Advancement in Engineering and Technology of Institution of Engineers India. Besides my original professional engagement as a professor of School of Material Science in a university. Well, today I will be talking on uh, the funding, which normally you have heard about CSIR, DSP and others. But as Institution of Engineers India, we also modestly fund to the projects and very uniquely it is for the undergraduate students postgraduate students as well as for the PhDs. And uh, before I go into the uh, general funding, I am told that there should be some highlights by the Congress organizer on the areas of my area of metallurgy materials as far as whatever project I have done and what are the opportunities. So I will take not much of time. <coughs> I think but research funding as a whole, you know that this is a funding for the research area both in art science and technology and social science. And it is uh, a, it's a, on the competitive process you have to get the project. The basic connotation of funding is this. And such process is basically in our country is run by the government because as you know, in our country unlike developed country, funding from the government is more than funding from the industry for the research projects. And uh, for the developing countries, it is uh, total research funding. Most of the developed countries are between 1.5 to 3 in the GDP, but in Sweden, it's only the country exceeds 4%. <coughs> so this is the general statistics for this, and uh, most of the research funding comes from two major sources. One is corporate through research development department. Government primarily carry out through the universities and government agencies. Small amount of scientific research is carried out by charitable foundations like this. And in the OECD, around two thirds of the research development in the scientific and technical fields is carried out by the industry, 20% and 10% respectively by the universities and government. Now, government funded agencies are basically this government funded research can either be uh, by government itself through the grant of academy and other research outside. Sometimes the world basically comes the basic research. Some scientists and engineers and faculty members do the basic research. But this basic research funding, since the outcome is not that way very much visible in the future, it is to work together for a long, long time. Basic research funding is very difficult, but for example in NASA, the quest for man to send to moon was inspired by the developed better sound recording. So then the, all the sound companies started funding this NASA's this project. So there are uniqueness also, but mainly the application oriented research and technology development research are being funded by the government. And additional advantage of government sponsored research is that the results of the results are publicly shared, whereas the privately funded thing, the research ideas are controlled by the single group. That is the limitation of government funding and privately funding research. These are the some of the highlights now, as you already heard about the Council of Scientific Research, how the mode of funding, etc. University Grants Commission for the universities. There are special assistance program, state universities and the central universities as well as Dean universities, they used to get the special funding from the UGC, but that funding is very modest and also, to also these are for the UGC approved universities. We are in Department of Science and Technology, there are schemes like SERC, which is the intensified research in high priority areas. There are mission mode program, nano mission, science and technology, then funded in for the feast infrastructure development, fast track young scientists are the major highlights. In between, they are Ramanujo Fellowship, Lossolan Fellowship, they are supporting as earlier the last speaker told, funding for the international visits, funding for the international conferences to be done, etc. But these are all research innovative, <coughs> research oriented project to be done, out of which the nano mission is a big program besides this normal program of SERC, which is science and engineering research. In nano mission and nano program, 
it is major funded for the nano mission under the scheme for development this is for the energy and environment sensing applications electronics and photonic communication systems for me i have as you know nowadays the area is from the microelectronics to the miniaturization of the electronics equipment so during this miniaturization enter interconnects are increasing and the system is getting hot you will say the mobile after talking for a long time is getting hot so most prediction is when you go on meeting the miniaturization more interconnect is developing inside the system more joule heat and more high temperature most prediction there is one day is coming when silicon may go melted which is the mother material for all electronics and electronic devices so taking that into the crew the scientists and engineers started working on it and they started finding that the silicon can be break down to 5 to 7 nanometer it can emit light normally the bulk silicon to nano silicon silicon is a indirect band gap material as a physicist calculation so it cannot emit light but it is seen when it is making the nano level it can emit light so from electronics communication you have to go for the photonic communication such type of project i obtained from dst from this nano mission one pro project and what we developed is from the nano nano level when we cast down to the nano level is silicon this luminations of the blue luminances came out and out of which when this nano particle again this is a luminescent part so photonic to uh, electronic to photonic communication is one application another application is there is a band gap as i already told the physicist this there is a band gap in gdn so since this nano particle is getting silicon nano particle when you start coating on it on a op non optimized solar cell its efficiency get is increased this is deep coated solar cell with the nano particle collide solution of silicon and that develop the efficiency to the high level you could see the black line above which is the high efficiency now the normal efficiency in the red level so the efficiency enhancement of solar cell is also the effect this is the offshoot from the project given by the nano mission project now there is a department called atomic energy uh, department government of india there is a board of nuclear research and science is an advisory body of department of atomic energy dae to recommend financial assistance to university institution laboratories with the objective to encourage promote science by dae so dae another funding agency these are all having their major website so if you go to the website enter rules and regulation what is to be done how to apply has been there but it supports the basic research that is the creation of technology scientific theory or new or technology innovative technology which requires which don't have immediate application in the technology for the industry so this basic research also is required to be done and brns is the system which can do there are a lot of other modestly supported by department of science and technology there is i am not talking about the drdo funding this morning there is a big big lecture on the entire drdo funding by but for the besides normal drdo funding with the laboratories there are two important one is sponsored research for the academic institutions who are here around and the cars project with the cars research acquisition project these are the two major which can be quickly done and which is implementable project and it has got a very limited uh, rules and regulation to be adhered to you can submit a project there and the you can fund on the area of their interest high temperature material is one which i got from dedu for its mechanical property evolution in the corrosion and abrasion resistance well uh, many other drdo and another thing is if you collaborate with the drdo lab you can get a lot of projects but drdo uh, exhaustively done then there is a uh, unique area is ministry of science and technology ministry of steel government of india as you know nowadays the load of automobile this motorization is coming up more of the requirement of the fuel efficient car more lighter weight car thinner shape with higher 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 strain that journey started from 1970 with the oil embargo and still it is working on it so industry shell free steel all the steel companies in the automobile sectors are working for a high strength steel with a low uh, in very thin steel 
So taking that as a mission, DRDO and steel is funding. There is a lot of Ministry of Steel. They have got R&D funding for SDF and R&D government will have budgetary support. Out of this R&D for the steel development fund, there is a project we receive. They are now in the zone. Actually, this is the banana diagram of the steel development. We are in the zone of the 1,500 1, MPA to 20% elongation zone. So that development now they are funding to the institute industry and their uniqueness is they fund with the university and academic collaboration. The academic institution and industry collaboration. My project is for Tata Steel and our university collaborative project because they wanted to see that outcome of the project is used by Tata Steel and load. So this is a big amount project. Few course, you can apply for a course type of project. There are a lot of development. There is welding, laser welding, lot of things in the material to material welding. Now that is the thing and that's why we have developed a high strength low carbon multi-phase steel with a from a 100, 1300 NPA elongation 40% which is in the vicinity of their objective and here they have identified this project as a national project for capacity augmentation and this is in collaboration with the Tata Steel. So university and Tata Steel collaborative project. That is for the Ministry of Steel Government of India in the area of high steel elastic for the automotive industries is basically the areas of materials metallurgy. There are another way of project that I think since morning I was attending all the program. This is not highlighted, it is a multi-institutional funded project. You take IIT, universities, a CSR lab or a science sheet of nuclear physics lab, some laboratory, five, two, 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 three laboratories or five laboratories from here five, with academic institution and from abroad you identify the thing. There is a DST mission project. DST wanted to involve for <coughs> development of the technological collaborative research and development on a global issues. They collaborate with the collaboration with the foreign agencies and foreign universities and Indian universities and institute, multi-institutional project under Indo-US team, Indo-Australia, Indo-UK and many other Indo-Canadian and other things are there. Focuses technology of the nanomaterials for clean energy, nanofabrionics, it is now in a nano age. So its fabrication is also a problem. So nanofabrionics in the area which Indo-US project got and materials for clean water is also a mission for project for this sort of agency. Here we got, in my university I have two projects on this. One is Indo-Australia project that is a in all Australian university, New South Wales and other urban all university, five universities there and five universities institute, IIT, BESU, our university as well as science sheet of nuclear physics. Jointly we have submitted a project through DST international funding that is the DST funded Indo-Australia strategic research funding project which is for nano composite for clean energy and that development is also taken by the Australia and India both. We have in the meeting in the ministerial level also for this. For this type of thing is another is Indo-US where nanofabrionic application for photonic and energy conservation that is from the US University of Illinois Chicago University of California here from the IIT Kanpur IIT Kharagpur Bengal Engineering Science University that's my university and CMARI Durgapur has jointly made this project and it's a worth of huge project where yeah, as uh, somebody was asking about the visit to international and visit to international is also funded by this. Besides this project, Indo-US also fund for the collaborative, uh, for the international visits. If you visit the website, I think youngster was asking that if you visit the website of Indo-US, then you see there are a lot of funding available for young researchers to go abroad, do their research, exchange their program and also attend the international funding project. So with this now I will go for the institution, my institution, Institution of Engineers India. Institution of Engineers India is an organization, is an institution created in 1920, then under the Royal Charter in 1935, is the only institution 
created by the act of parliament and it is has got lot of domain of activity in this fold by the government of india we higher education research quality development awareness of the technical things etc etc so that's a big lecture out of which we are funding the research project because we are uh, funded we are recognized by scientific and industrial research organization as a industrial research organization department of science and technology industrial research sector ministry of science and technology ministry of science and technology recognized as the zero the scientific and industrial research organization as institution <coughs> under this purview we have this we have to cope the advance in the science and technology in view of leading the engineering intervention so i i also promote r and d and do their own r and d in the promotion of r and d our mission is <coughs> we have under identified some fast areas of research mainly on the interdisciplinary science and engineering out of which alternative energy digital manufacturing gas turbine affluent treatment solar cell mav <coughs> physical legal and disabled equipment development by mechanical and nano science and technology for the first five years planning and we will be changing our there is biotechnology another area for biotechnology <coughs> also here yeah, the input engineering also so the would be first area <coughs> I and every year to improve upon our thrust area, we organize a research meet with the academic institution research laboratory to identify the newer areas of scientific uh, thrust and accordingly we change our thrust what to fund. Then we, as a policy, fund this is unique fund application oriented research project. to btech mtech and phd level student of university and technical institutions as you know btech project funding in engineering college and institution is a problem all private engineering colleges also they are hardly getting any fund in universities also we are not getting guided to give any fund for the what's the undergraduate research project but here we have made this that undergraduate postgraduate the distribution is and as an output indicator for our project outcome what is the outcome we want at least one research publication from one project to our iii spinjar journal and or either or a patent for the project funded by us this is the uh, outcome indicator we identify that this you should do third one is project with an industry collaboration will get a priority some area with the industry collaboration will get more priority in this third one is some areas of important feature we have so far in this pie chart you could see supported aeronautics 16% civil engineering 8% biotechnology mechanical engineering computers electronics materials chemical all the areas of project we have and electronics <coughs> on the domain we have supported so far in the project to the undergraduate postgraduate and phd our focus is engineering students pattern of distribution is 70% of our total funding to the ug level 25% to the pg level 5% to the for the phd level because we know that phd level is getting much of more support from other government agencies so we more try to support the fundamental areas of vitech people to come up to the mtech etc and coverage all engineering and interdisciplinary disciplines both criteria of our is there is preferably the project leading to applied research will be funded and this will not be restricted to a specific stream of engineering it may be interdisciplinary no specific stream you can from any stream you can do it one of the institution what we do institution we have a category of institutional membership and our engineers and engineers are all the members we invite all the members to be the members of the institution for the student we have the student chapter at the colleges so we invite student to be member also as a student chapter but for a project we prefer that a institution who is applying us should be an institutional member of the institution 
our institutional engineers and also the guide should be a member of the institution. And for <coughs> R&D project, we prefer that one guide from the faculty and one guide from the industry as a co-guide and student will be the facilitator, he will be the main this thing. Third one is, we prefer that if you club an industry, whether if we, if we give a 50% fund, they should give a 50% fund of a particular project which we are writing. So matching grant is another concept which we introduce in our funding system. So this is our very modest approach for Institute of Engineers and I will invite projects from the students, mainly undergraduate students, postgraduates 